Ready to go for it? Take it away, Bowtide. <laughs> Hello, YouTube. Welcome to Bowtide Media. And today I've got a special guest. This is Mrs. Bowtide for a very special reaction. Uh, we're going to be listening to, uh, what are we, actually, what are we listening to? Taylor Swift's new album, Midnight. And are you a Taylor Swift fan? I'm a Swifty for life. Okay, YouTube. Swifty for life. Mm -hmm. um, day I die. Real quick, top three albums. Taylor Swift, go. Number one is always going to be Red. I think number two. I think number two is go quick. Folklore. Okay. And I think number three is... My gut's telling me 1989. Okay, 1989. So, fun. Um, I've listened to, I think, every Taylor Swift song at some point, um, but uh, not a huge Swifty myself. But uh, this will be fun. Um, so I've sort of coaxed Mrs. Bowtie into this uh, because it is my birthday, the day of this release. So this was the present that I demanded. <laughs> you asked politely. I asked politely, <laughs> but... Um, okay, so without any further ado, uh, let's hop into it. Do you do you know much about the album? Like, have you like obviously we haven't heard it yet. This is it's like we're listening to no. this an hour after it's been released. So the most important thing to understand about this album is that these are a bunch of songs that Taylor wrote when she was writing her previous albums. So um, really, like quick, all throughout, or like yeah. So really quick backstory: Taylor's been re-releasing her music because she's been re-recording it so that she can own her own music. And every time she re-releases an album, she includes a couple songs that are called like "From the Vault." So they're mm. songs oh, yes. that she wrote at the original time of the original album, but they didn't make it onto the cut of the album. And thanks so they're to, songs thanks from to the Scooter. Vault. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to him for that. Um, so there are these vault songs. So every time she's done a re-release, we've had these vault songs. So now that she's talked about the fact that this new album, Midnight, is a sort of collection of songs that she's written over the years, there's something really cool because we almost get an entire vault album that are songs that she's written over the years. But stylistically, her albums have changed over the years, right? So we have like country when it comes to fearless, but then we hit pop with 1989 and then we hit more like folky indie when it comes to folk, uh, folklore and evermore. So this is a collection of songs written over the years, which means stylistically they may change. So okay. I'm intrigued to see what this sounds like. Now I did get a mm -hmm. slight spoiler of the sound that someone okay. referred to it. Okay. Someone has referred to this as a dark or moody 1989 album. Okay. So that's the only thing I know about it so far. Okay. Sounds good. So uh, I'm excited to hop into this. I think uh, let's go for it. So just based on our setup that we have right now, it's going to be a little, we're not going to be watching, you're not going to be watching us listening to the songs. We're just going to talk about it after and give some commentary um, just because that's how the setup works with multiple people and that's yay. So uh, we're going to listen to the first track uh, and then talk about it after. What is this one? Uh, Lavender Haze. So let's go for it. It's explicit. And there's a lot of explicit songs Ooh, actually. Gay. Here we go. Okay, Lavender Haze, first thoughts. Definitely gives me 1989 vibes. Yeah. But stylistically, but lyrically, if I had to guess when it was written, I would guess that it was written somewhere between like reputation and lover. Because it's talking a lot about her reputation and how she's like not caring. It was the name of the album, yeah. So. Yeah, so, but that, that was so like stylistically what reputation was yeah. all about was people what people had to say about her mm -hmm. and then lover was all about the love that she found on the other side of people bashing yeah. her reputation but if i had to guess i like it it's kind of like a yeah production wise it's a little dreamy i would say like uh i like the the subtle mm -hmm. like that male vocal sample the high the like higher pitched i guess soprano male vocal sample the <laughs> whatever mm -hmm. but um it's got um the way she sings some of those like higher they're not breathy, but like a higher... Yeah, falsetto. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of reminiscent of some of the songs like um, that she did on Reputation, like Gorgeous. Um, That's true. Delicate, things like that. Yep. Yeah. I liked I, it. Yeah, I, I actually like that too. That was that was a pretty solid first track, I would say. It's a good, yeah. strong opener, I would say. Yeah. Strong opener. Okay, let's, uh, let's keep moving this along. Next up, we've got uh, Maroon. Not five, just Maroon. <laughs> Maroon, number two. Okay, so like right off the top, definitely 1989 vibes. Like, yeah. um, very beginning sounds like Out of the Woods. I don't know that one specifically, but okay. that's okay. If you were to go back and listen to the very beginning of Out of the Woods and then listen to okay. the beginning of Maroon. The beat, the production did sound very similar. Like it felt like mm -hmm. a, a certain era of Taylor. There's something interesting about, and like, 
maybe you disagree with me, but I feel like what's really interesting is stylistically, the music doesn't feel like, it feels like in between music. Hmm. Like it's not, like it's not this upbeat poppy stuff necessarily, but it's not calm, chill, folk, indie. It's like something in the middle. Yeah. And I feel like that's so interesting because it's called Midnight's and Midnight's is this like in between. It's like afternoon for me, but yeah. <laughs> it's for you. I don't know. It's just an interesting, I, yeah, I, stylistically, it's very interesting that that's what she's gone with for an album titled Midnight. I know what you mean. Yeah. Like I, it, at the end, just the, the more emphatic, uh, <laughs> explicitive made it sound more like an off of reputation while still feeling like a, I guess a 1989. Yeah. I'm also, I mean, as Taylor's grown up and written more music and more albums, she's gone from writing really like teeny music teen kind of stuff to like, now we've got. It's like Disney music before songs now. Songs that like are swearing and things like that. But also, like lyrically, she's wonderful at what she does. <laughs> and so I'm like anticipating the song where there's that line that like hits your gut and you're like, oh, yes. And you like want that line tattooed on your body. <laughs> That's what I'm waiting for. And I feel like that we were close. We got a little bit of that in this one, but we're okay. not there yet. I'm like waiting for that lyric. Okay, okay. Are you going to get a tattoo of something here? Wouldn't that be so fun one day to get a Taylor Swift tattoo? A lyric of hers? Personally, I'm I'm okay. Not for you, but for the Swifties okay. in the world. Okay. I know someone um, that has a tattoo that says Fearless. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well. So, it's been done. Uh, up next, we've got Anti-Hero. Okay. This one apparently also has a music video that's coming out. Okay. I think it's tomorrow morning. Okay, fine. Be wrong. We'll, we'll see. But here's Anti-Hero. Okay, anti-hero. How's that one? Okay, so hilarious that you just said oh, yeah. that your midnights are your afternoons. afternoons and that's, she, that's the first line. One of the first lines in her song <laughs> is when her midnights turn into afternoons. So that's hilarious. That's very funny. Maybe you have more in common with Taylor than you thought. Maybe. Um, I like it. I don't like it. It's interesting because I'm always anticipating which ones are going to be like my favorites when mm, I listen. Yeah. I don't know if that one's going to be like one of my favorites, but I feel like it's one that might grow on me, especially mm. if there's going to be a music video that comes out. But there's also some of her fun, um, which has lots of like rhyming lyrics and she has them in quick succession. That's like a, a fun thing she does in a lot of different songs. Mm. And you see a taste of that here, which I like. Nice. Yeah. I, I That one's... Feels like a filler to me, but which is ironic if it has if the first one to be a music video that's like a single of sorts. Like I liked Lavender Haze better than Maroon, and then this one being like the third one I've liked. So I don't know. I, I think this I'm is more the production. One. Like I'm more focused on production and and what it sounds like rather than the lyrics. So that's fair. I'm a bit of both. You have to be a bit of both when it comes to Taylor. You have to be a bit of both for everyone. That's not just like yeah, a that's Taylor, fair, but especially Taylor. <laughs> that's true. Um. Okay. Let's see. Is this what one she not says. The music video? Uh, it says, yeah. It is the anti hero. The first video for anti hero will be out. Huh. It'll be so. It's the, the first day single of sorts for the project. So. Okay, interesting. So that's interesting. Then that that's the first. That didn't feel like the most like single. No, it song. didn't. So I'm really intrigued to see what the hmm. music video looks like. Yeah, totally. Hmm. Okay, let's move on to the uh, only one with a feature here. This is Snow on the Beach featuring Lana Del Rey. Okay, Snow on the Beach featuring Lana Del Rey. I thought there'd be more Lana Del Rey. 100%. I was. did too. I I think that will be a disappointing song for a lot of people. I think, um, have you listened to much to Lana Del Rey? Like yes. I haven't, I haven't listened to a ton, but I know in bit. the realm of like, of music critic stuff of like all my ratings things that people seem to really like her and she's fairly big. I, I picture Taylor Swift as like the younger Lana Del Rey in terms of like where they're kind of at. It's interesting because she gave her really high, high praise when she talked about the opportunity to have her feature on the album. Yeah, she, like, like that's what I'm saying. Like she she's like raved about biggie. Lana Del Rey. And it was like weird that it wasn't like she didn't get a verse. She was just kind of background yeah. chorus. Um, definitely heard some folklore-esque mm -hmm. sounds yeah. in I this think, one for yeah, sure. For sure. Um, she did she did drop a video on socials before this one released talking about kind of the story behind it, the idea that you would never see snow falling on a beach. And so it's the idea of like the impossible happening, that kind of an snow idea. Snow could fall on a beach, could it not? I mean, it's r rare, but it's not impossible. 
don't know. That's what she said in right? the video. Like, there's no way that's there's no way that's never happened. No, it does happen. Like, yeah, we'll yeah. think about, like, yeah. there's lots of places that have beaches, like, at lakes, but they're... Yeah, they, yeah. I guess that's fair. But, like, she's whatever. More, yeah. Yeah. I get it. So needless I, to say, this maybe wasn't our favorite song. No, this wasn't, wasn't we had the higher favorite. hopes for it. Yeah, I would say so for sure. So this is your on your own kid. I feel like that one was written like a story the same way like a song from the Fearless album would have been. Like it sounds like it's a story about some high school something. Yeah, that's fair. Like, it is, like, a, a sort of coming-of-age song, like, the this is now fly birdie type thing, so. I liked it. There's, like, the, there's there's something about these songs that I, like, can't put my finger on. But sometimes, you know, when you listen to an album, the songs feel really different. A lot of these feel very similar, but, like, not in a bad way. It's like there's something yeah. musically thematic about them. Yeah. I'd say so. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. That was a little, a little underwhelming for me, but again, I'm I've more focused on production and so That's fair. I think there's a like as I'm listening to them and hearing the nostalgia of previous eras of writing, there's something that like takes me back to another album that there's something mm -hmm. totally. Yeah, That's nostalgic fair. about it. That's fair. That's fair. Uh okay, now for this time <laughs> for real, it's midnight rain. Here we go. Okay, long fade out of Midnight Rain. What do you think? The intro was different, and I'm trying to figure out like what it is and what it's about and what it's there well, it's for. Well, it's a oh, like why was the purpose behind like the more vocaloided vocal and like more processed kind of yeah. There's something like, like different to it because it starts with that, it repeats it a second time, but then those same lyrics she sings later on. I think the third or the fourth hmm. time. So that's just interesting, the differentiation there. Production-wise, that was actually, that was my favorite song, I think. As I say, I think it might be one of my favorites It's so a little far. more up my alley, obviously, with a little more, like, had a little more elements that's similar to something like EDM does for the most part that I listen to. But, um, yeah, I I actually, like, like that one quite a bit. Um, it has a very classic, so I'm a big Justin Timberlake fan. And uh, JT often does uh, two parts to a song. Like he has like the basic song and then he does like a back end that's like a little more slowed down, a little more like chill. Mm -hmm. And that reminded me a lot of that with like the kind of reversing sounds of the, mm -hmm. the synths and like just the very calm, chill nature of the track um, towards the, I mean, it's the whole thing, but it reminded me a lot of a back end of a Justin Timberlake, especially from like the 2020 uh, experience double album. So mm -hmm. um, that was probably my favorite so far. I liked it. Again, lyrically, always a hit. She always has these lines that are like, they're simple, but they're so relatable. She had a line that said something, um, he only thinks of me when he sees me on TV. And then she said, I only think of him on midnights like this. And I don't know, if you're a girl, those lines are just... <laughs> For me, it's one of those things where it feels a little bit of like the vendetta dig in of like, mm -hmm. he only thinks of me when I'm on TV, which is kind of like a dig, but also feels like a little bit of a heartbreak, but you kind of get to rub it in, that you're still lingering and that you only think of him, but you think about him in these like... Dark, somber times. I don't know. Kind of That's, interesting lyrically. Okay. I liked it. That's fair. Uh, let's head into the now back half. Technically, this is the middle of the song, I think. Um, question? Question? <laughs> Here we go. Okay, that was the most single-like song of anything, I thought. Like, that felt like a yeah. first music video drop, kind of like this is the one that you hear on the radio right away kind of track. That one, Derek, remember I said before that they all sounded kind of similar, like, mood-wise? Yeah. That one, I feel like, broke that. 100%. Yeah, I would agree. So. I liked it. Yeah, not bad. That, that feels more like a, like, classic Taylor, if that makes sense. Like a, like. Yeah. Like a lover era of sorts. I don't know. Like a, it feels like the more poppy of the, like, it's it's not as moody as stuff as of uh, Evermore folklore, but that's fair. not as mean as a reputation, but not as country as, you know what I mean? It feels like Yeah, a, that's fair. I'll give you that. Um, I'm noticing there's, she's had a couple songs now that they just, like, cut at the end. Yeah. Like that one that you said, oh, it took a long time to fade out. That yeah. was, like, one of the only ones. They all kind of have these abrupt finishes to them. I liked it. It was a good one. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. I feel like there's not a ton to say about that one, but it was still, like, solid. No, yeah. So, 
What's okay, next? Okay, let's hop on the next one. This is uh, Vigilant Shit. Vigilante. Vigilante Shit. Fun. Okay, let's hop into it. Definitely Reputation song. Definitely Reputation vibes. That was like, <laughs> not, no doubt about it. Um, I can see why that wasn't on a reputation though and written like it just it didn't felt it felt a little more progressive, I wanna say. Like it feels like it has the storytelling that like a folklore or an evermore had. But it has the style of a reputation album. Yeah. Song. I, yeah. Um, there was a part when she goes into she sings a little differently partway through there towards the end. Mm-hmm. And it almost reminded me, it was like a little stripped down from the music. I almost like pictured her in one of those like basement clubs in the twenties when jazz stuff was starting, <laughs> like that kind of music. Not that it sounded like jazz, but that's where like yeah, I, I know picture you, you singing yeah. that song. I don't know. That's what I just pictured. Um, I also love her the her line. Uh, I don't dress for women. I don't dress for men. I dress I for revenge. Me. Yeah, that's kind of like, fun. That's a great line. That was very fun. I almost um wish that it went longer. Yeah, some like of the songs I wish. Yeah, that was only two minutes forty four seconds. So. Like I think the whole album is only about forty four minutes. Yeah, but I, I feel so. like that song. Like I almost could have doubled the length of it because I felt like I wanted more of the story. That's what I've been saying about music for so long now. <laughs> longer songs, longer songs. Taylor Swift has a ten minute version of All Too Well. I yes, I get that. Oh, okay. That's Just I understand that. In case you want to listen to it, how would you have not known one that of the I... greatest songs you'll ever listen to YouTube? Taylor Swift's 10 minute version of All Too Well. I would be doing her an injustice if I didn't just, you know, slide that in there wow. as a promo. Okay, yeah. I think everyone's You're heard welcome. that song by this point. If you haven't, you know what to do. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's hop on to the next one. This is uh Bejeweled. <laughs> That's the one that I can envision people like at a concert, just like arms in the air, like, you know, just vibing to. Yeah, that's fair. I felt like another single one. I felt like another, another single style track, honestly. Like it just, I don't know. That one's very similar to what question, um, where it's a one that I can hear. I feel like I can hear that on the radio pretty much like in the next mm-hmm. couple weeks, which I don't listen to the radio. It's interesting too, because even though we listen to songs, we're like, oh, this reminds us of like Reputation or 1989 or whatever it may be. There's still like, this still feels like its own, yeah, piece in and of yeah. its way. Like there's so much such a such a callback to what's been done, but you can also see how she's paving a new way forward in what she writes and how she's just testing out different styles and yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, I liked it. I'm a fan. Yeah. Not bad. Uh, let's move on to the next track. This is uh, Labyrinth. <laughs> Okay, what was that? Oh, I didn't even see Labyrinth. No, is that the next one? Yeah, Labyrinth. Labyrinth. I liked it. I don't think it's going to be my favorite on the album. No. I feel the album's slowing down a little bit for me. Like, it's like... It's losing its steam a little bit. You know what I mean? I think I need another comebacker at some point. Some... Something pick me up. up. Okay. I don't know. Personally. That's fair. I'm still trying to figure out like stylistically what the whole thing is supposed to kind of feel like. Yeah. And that'll take some time too, to, to like to really look through stuff and look through lyrics more so. And Yeah. And even like Taylor's so interesting when she writes, she, when she wrote red, she talked about the idea of like red as a color can symbolize so many different things. It can symbolize love or anger or, and so she wrote this whole album titled red, that red is just this color that, encompasses so many parts of our lives because it encompasses so many different feelings and experiences but midnights is also this thing that like sometimes when the clock strikes midnight you feel different ways and there are times where there's like that fun beat that we get and you're like you're out and you're ready to party and you're having the best time of your life at midnight but then this song is also that like quiet like contemplative midnight yeah like a late night drive in or something like that yeah so i almost feel like it's really interesting because she always provides these different aspects of the thing that her album is surrounded or is surrounding that topical thing. So I don't know. It's just really interesting to see how she does that. Totally. Okay. Let's see. We got uh, three more songs left uh, until we were done. So let's head into Karma. Okay. My favorite line in that was sweet like justice. Karma is a queen. Wow. Right? That's the line? Yeah, I think so. 
Yeah, sweet like, sweet like justice, karma like is a queen. queen. Hmm. So interesting thing, people after Reputation were convinced that Taylor was going to release an album called Karma. Oh, why? She just used it a lot in Reputation and hmm. some of her lines made people like made people think that she was going to release an album. So then when she did all of her little releases to show you what the titles of all the songs were on Midnight's and she released Karma, people were like laughing, being like, oh, we're out here th- thinking we're getting a whole album called Karma. Really, it's just a song. Hmm. What do you think of that one compared to the other ones though? Or up to this point. This is one where like the lyrics, I feel like there's probably a lot of hidden meaning or maybe some explicit meaning yes, to the lyrics. Yes, I, I think so. I, these are, I think towards the end here, it's a little more, you got to deep dive some of these. Like to you really, unpack it line yeah, by line to figure yeah. it out. There's definitely story and lived experience in those lines, especially like when we had a whole album called Reputation. If you got a song called Karma, there's got to be some story yeah, behind it. 100%. So. But I like that. Sweet like justice, karma is a queen. Maybe that's my tattoo. Probably not. Yeah, it's probably not the greatest one, I think, for now, but we can think Let's about it. Let's be real. If I'm going to get something tattooed, it's going to be from All Too Well. It's not my name. Not Bowtide Media. <laughs> With a heart. <laughs> Just fuck the patriarchy. That's what it's going to be. <laughs> nice. Uh, okay, let's Just go on kidding. to good old Sweet Nothing. Okay, the penultimate track. How's that? But you know what it made me think of just because it, I don't know if it was content to the song or whatever. When she did an Instagram post today announcing the release of Midnight's, she referenced some of the people that like have helped make Midnight's happen. One of the people is named William Bowery, I believe is the name. And that's the like pseudonym or the fake name for her boyfriend, Joe. Oh. And so I'd, I'd love to see which tracks he worked on. Oh, yeah. Out of curiosity, because he worked on like folklore and I'm pretty sure... He's the one when it came to folklore that um, he was the one that helped write, I think, the chorus of um, Exile, which mm. is like one of my favorite songs on that album, if not my favorite one. Um, but I would just love to see she like referenced him. And so I'd be intrigued to see if there's like. Oh, William Bowery, written by William Bowery. This one we just, Sweet yeah, Nothing. The one we just listened to. Okay, see, isn't that interesting? So no, it was written by her and him. I think. Well, you, that was solid because wow, the other I'm, ones haven't been. Wow. I'm so proud of myself. Wow. That's insane. <laughs> the so, wow. I'm just going back up and some of these aren't, that is crazy that you got that. <laughs> Yo, that is, I'm so proud of myself for that. Is that the first one? I literally can't find any other ones, at least on the Spotify credits. Wow. That's the first one that he's been on. Wow. I'm Guys, that's crazy. I'm so proud of that. That's crazy. <laughs> you had to have known. That was no, crazy. I swear I didn't. I swear I did not. I wow. wouldn't have thought about it. And she posted the Instagram thing and I was like, oh yeah, I wonder if he. Okay. Wow. Wow. Okay. That was impressive. I'm I'll give you that. I'm proud that was, of myself that for that nice. one. Okay. Wow. Let's, uh, let's move on to the final track. How about that? This is, um, this is Mastermind. Final one. Okay, it's all over. Oh, uh, yeah. First of all, Mastermind. What do you think about Mastermind? I like that one. I think it actually might be one of my favorites on the album. Oh, really? Yeah, I liked it. That's not too bad. There are definitely some other ones that I thought were a little more felt, a little more filler to me. That one wasn't. Uh, that one wasn't. That was like a top twenty percent for me. Twenty five. I don't know. Top third. It's only thirteen songs. Top five, I guess. Then sure, top six. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's the top half. Okay. So, anything else about the last one, or you just want to go to the? Just want to talk about it overall. Uh, I liked that one lyrically. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I liked that, like the, it was, it was catchy. Yeah. So that's one that I would go back to. I'm pretty. If I was like driving in the car, I'd go back and like. That's fair. If I was trying to hand select songs, I'd go back and I'd play that one again. That's fair. Um. Okay. Overall. What do you think of Midnight's? I'm a fan. Yeah? Now, here's the thing. When it comes to a Taylor album, I always have to listen to it multiple times before I, like... 100%. As, make, as like, most a, people do with most make artists. Make a, like, really verdict, like. you know, on it. Like, mm-hmm. a, a rating or a, yeah. if I'm to, like, rank it in all of the Taylor yeah. albums. Um, but I like it. I am always... I mean, she's been making music for over a decade, and 
she still manages to like come up with something new and innovative and different. And yet she has this ability to like throw back to this nostalgic era. She's creative with her lyrics. Um, musically, she's trying new things. I know for a long time people were like, oh, well, you're country and now you're pop and now you're folk. And the best thing about Taylor is that her music evolves with her. You never, ever get the same thing twice because she's always, she's changing and her music is all about her life. And so the music obviously changes with her. Um, it's fun to experience the eras with her. Like I'm close to the same age as Taylor. And so when she was writing about, you know, love stories and heartbreak and I was experiencing those things. And so it's fun now to be in a different stage of life and listen to this music with a whole different perspective. So totally. um, I like it. I'm a fan. I'm definitely going to, we're going to be playing that for 100%. a while in the house. That's for sure. Um, and then I think it's one of those funny things too, is the more you like learn the lyrics and listen to it, the more you figure out what you really love. And I'm sure totally. there's some tattoo worthy lyrics that exist in this okay, album okay. that I haven't found yet, but okay. I'm sure they're in here that I just, if a few more lessons I'll find. Yeah. As a, as a fairly unbiased person, I would say, um, it felt a little uh, like it didn't know what it wanted to do. I think there was a, a few different styles where it kind of felt like it didn't really, it, it does sound like a compilation of sorts. You're saying from different eras. It doesn't really have like mm -hmm. a, a very, like a, a linear structure. It felt like it was very like wayward and drifting this way drifting that way a little bit so not too bad but didn't really have like a specific uh defining sound like a like a lover did or a reputation or folklore like all of them have That's they fair. feel like they have like very defining eras this one felt like a mishmash of a lot of different things um so not that that's necessarily a bad thing but it just i don't think it yeah they feel more like single like they feel like individualistic songs of, of, of rather than in a compilation rather than an album i don't know if that makes sense to you but like there's a difference between like compilations and albums albums feel like they have a linear they have a structure they have a, a storyline that's told all throughout where a compilation just like a bunch of songs put together in like a playlist this to me felt like a compilation which arguably would make sense if these are all vault songs that she wrote that's over the last like, totally. decade or whatever. So, so that would make sense. Totally. Okay, so I'm interested here. So um, on albumoftheyear.org, which I use for all my rating stuff, I would love to see the first initial reactions of people's stuff. So oh, like to see, already rated it. Oh, people do way earlier and okay. stuff too. And so people go crazy. So this is initial reaction also just of... A uh, barely like of, of people that are probably not crazy Swifty fans. Some of them are whatever. So I'm interested to see what the score is for right now. Okay. It is sitting at a 67 of a hundred with 77 on user reviews. So for context, six, it's 67. Clicked. No, sorry. It's 67 users and 77 critic. User is one you're actually really worried about. The critics are actually kind of trash, not gonna lie, but I'll okay. get, that's another thing. Um, it's like her last albums, Red Taylor's version was 81, Fearless Taylor's was 76, Evermore was 79, Folklore was 81, Lover was 86. So this is very similar to Lover and Reputation being 62. So, or 60, 68 was Lover, not 86. Um, and this so, number will change and evolve as more people listen to it? 100%, 100%. Okay. So I'm interested to see the of the tracks here. Mastermind is currently the highest rated one. And again, this is, it's not too crazy. Oh, wow. looks like the Rolling Stone, the Guardian, and the Independent have all given it a hundreds off the bat. So there's lots of reviews for them. So we'll give it a seven. Um, They're not as 50, obviously. No. Uh, and Vigilante shit is the lowest of everything. Everything else is fairly solid, but. Yeah, that's, 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 I felt like that's, that's where I expected it to be, honestly, like an okay. in-between, a middle ground for Taylor. So that's, yeah, that's where I felt that, but for me personally, but. Okay. Well, it'll be interesting to see how that changes. Mm -hmm. I got to give it a few more listens and then we'll find out. Just a few more and then we're done. No, no, guys. This is going to make my Spotify wrap, you bet. Okay. Okay. Is all too else going to be number one though? 10 version? I don't know. I haven't been listening to it as much lately. And it's hard because you have to listen to 10 minutes of it. It's not like a three minute listen. Like, you know what I mean? I know. Last three, year three it couldn't songs. make it on my list because it came out so late in the year. Yeah. Okay. But uh, thank you for watching. I've been Bowtied. I guess Mr. Bowtied in context. You're Mrs. Bowtied because we can't both yeah. be Bowtied. We're Bowtieds. Mr. and Mrs. Bowtied. That's a great way to put it. But um, thanks for watching. Put any and all comments you guys have in the comments section below. And uh, let me know if you want to see you back. In some capacity. Yeah, thanks YouTube for letting me just, you know, fangirl over Taylor. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. I know it's not your usual EDM. It's not your usual monster cat. It's not, you know, 
It's not the very typical, different for this channel. Very different. Not the typical bow tied stuff, but I appreciate you appeasing me and letting me share a little bit of my favorite artists with you as well. Yeah. And happy birthday to me. <laughs> Goodbye.